Hey friends, it's Laura, welcome back. I hope you're having a wonderful day. In today's planty video, I'm gonna be doing some general plant maintenance. There is just some plant chores that I need to get done, but I'm also, I'm also gonna show you some new plants that I just got. They are, some of them are a little bit crazy, like I can't believe that I have them. So I'm gonna show you those. I need to repot a couple of them and just, I'm gonna just talk about them and how excited I am to have them. I also changed things up in the plant room, so I'll just give you a quick little tour, show you how things are going, and probably some other things in there that I don't even realize I need to get done today. So if you're into that, maybe you have some plant care to do yourself, uh, let's just get started. I'm going to start off by showing you the rearranged plant room. Um, also, my little doggy angels are over here. This is Spock. He's he's old and having a little rest. Tater's right here having a nap. This area is pretty much the same, but it should be less crowded. And you'll notice that I have a lot more Hoyas out here. I talked about that in my last Hoya video. I am trying them over here. And normally there's grow lights here. They're just turned off right now so that you can see things a little bit better. And over here was my plant cabinet. As you can see, it is no longer there. So now I have a couch here, which is kind of like cozy. I don't know, I think I like it so far. And then over here we have a little like reading nook moment. I sit here a lot with the doggies and just hang out. I've got my Florida green in there. I'm hoping that it kind of fills in this corner a little bit more. I trimmed it and I'm gonna put those propagations back in. Um, it used to be like way up here and it kind of looked off balance, I, I think, or I, it started to look off balance. And I've got these wall planters up here still. They are still doing well. I don't know that they're getting quite enough light, but they are growing, so I'm not gonna worry too much. And then the cabinet is over here. And the first thing you'll see is that the lights are off. Unfortunately, I love this new setup, but unfortunately when I moved the cabinet over here, I think I bumped something because the lights now don't work. So I do need to go buy some new lights. I've kind of been tinkering with the wiring and stuff, hoping that I could fix it. But then I kind of got nervous that, you know, even if I do fix the wiring, it might be a little bit janky and then could cause a fire when I'm not here. With grow lights, I don't know. I feel like you gotta be pretty careful. So I, that is on my list of things <laughs> probably to buy today. I have to go to the store. Then over here, this is a change as well. I put my Milano Chrysum on a moss pole. Um, I am kind of hoping that this plant will just get really huge. Like I, I struggle with this plant, but I haven't ever had it on a moss pole. So I'm hoping that that will be an upgrade. This is one of those really, really tall moss poles from Mossify. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit too big for the plant right now, but I am just dreaming that someday it'll be really big. And then I have the Mossify light set up. It's not on, obviously, just to give it an extra boost. And there's a ton of baby propagations down there, which I'm hoping will someday grow in. And if you see all this like red shards of glass, I had a situation happen. I was trying to water the moss pole with one of those like watering globes. You know what I mean? Like you stick them in your plant and they apparently keep your plant alive. I thought I was being a genius. So I had the, the globe in the top and you know, it was watering the moss pole. This was in my shower, of course, the most dangerous place for this to happen. It was a glass globe and I had it set up. It was balanced. It looked like it was going well. So I left it and then I heard a shattering and there was glass everywhere. I cleaned the shower out, the shower's fine. Um, those shards of glass, I don't know, I should just pick them out, but I didn't want to cut myself. This plant is not due to be repotted now that I've got it on the moss pole, because obviously I repotted it when I put it on the moss pole. So I just am leaving the glass in there. I don't think the glass will hurt the plant. It's still in there, and we are just gonna hope that that's okay. Before I put this plant on the moss pole, it did put out a leaf, but the leaf was all rotten. Honestly, monochrysums are so weird. So I'm, I'm really hoping that the moss pole helps, but of course, you never know. On top of the cabinet, I feel like you can now see these plants a lot better, especially when the sun is coming through, they're kind of glowing. So I have some of my terrariums up here. This Eglionema, I feel like I never appreciate it, but now that the light comes through it, it's just so stunning. And I've got a few of my smaller philodendrons. I've been making these little mushrooms. I made them out of clay, obviously, and then I stuck them on old paintbrush handles. 
and then they're just in my plants. And things like this, like I just feel like these smaller plants are just so much more visible now that they're on top of the cabinet. So I really do, I'm enjoying this new setup. Here's my big globe terrarium and I'm gonna be adding some things to this terrarium today, foreshadowing of my new plants. Uh, this is another little terrarium that I made recently. It's doing well with the baby tears in there. And my jewel orchid is here. It's doing pretty well. There's some string of turtles in there. And then over in this corner is my Rojo Congo. And I mean, it's doing well all of the time. I feel like this is a good spot for it. It's enjoying the window, but it doesn't need like full sun. So it can kind of just exist there. And that is the update. To me, I feel like this is a really, really big change. It feels so much cozier um, than how I had it set up before. And I feel like these plants on the cabinet are getting better light. When I first moved the cabinet, the lights were not fully broken. They would come on and then turn off right away. But anyway, I had a look at how it looked like glowing in front of the window and it just looked so beautiful. So I am happy with the new setup. I think with new seasons, it's good to rearrange. And when I say new seasons, I mean spring, even though it's really snowy, but that is some changes around here. Also new, and maybe you noticed already, is my Milano Chrysum shirt. I just got home from work and this package was here. I've been waiting for this for a couple weeks because it comes from abroad. I'm very excited. You might be able to guess what it is. This is from Tropics Narcotics, which is apparently my new clothing provider. They have crazy plant shirts. They have so many shirts that I love. I do have a promo code, I'll put it below if you are interested. I feel like they're very unique, but very wearable. And yeah, I love that. Another planty thing that I have been up to is planning my garden. I have had Veggie Patch for a really long time and this year I am expanding it a little bit. I'm gonna be putting in, and by I, I mean my husband and I are gonna be putting in a trellis archway between these two gardens so that I can grow more peas, more squash, more beans, things like that. I am growing loofah again, and that's gonna climb up here. I'm gonna have sort of more of a vertical trellis here. Lots of herbs, I'm already stockpiling some herbs. And then hopefully I will have a lot more space in the middle of the garden for just like the regular crops that we eat a lot of. Um, and my garlic is starting to poke up already, which I hope that the snow does not affect that, but um, it is there, it's alive. I planted it in the fall. I always have grapes and strawberries here against our deck. This part is new. Uh, last year I started growing the marshmallow plant, which is a wild herb. And the roots can be used to make like a natural fluffy marshmallow type food. And the leaves and the flowers are absolutely beautiful and they can be used for a variety of health uses. I'm adding in echinacea and feverfew, which are also beautiful herbs. Larkspur is not an herb, it's poisonous, but it looks really beautiful. I've got some seeds started. And then up here against the fence, I'm growing clematis. I started that last year and I'm gonna add in some sweet peas this year as well. And I have started some seeds. This is my little seed starting area in my office. So a few of them are sprouting. This is the Larkspur that I was mentioning. This is also Larkspur. I started those a few weeks ago. Here are the loofahs. So two of them have come up. They take a while to sprout, I find. But you gotta start them now, because otherwise they don't quite mature. I'm growing tamarind here. A friend brought home some seeds from Mexico. They had a tamarind and then they just kept the seeds thinking maybe I could sprout them. We'll see. Got some habaneros started here. And then down here, I've got some apricot asters and some foxglove and what's back here? Belladonna, okay. So I am growing some like poisonous flowers this year. I've been avoiding growing things like that because I have kids, but my kids are now older teenagers and they will not be eating the flowers, so we're good. 
And then I've started more echinacea. I already started some last year in the ground, but I just want to sprout a few more. I, I love echinacea tea. I love the flowers and I just would like tons. Pollinators love them. So I want lots of them in my yard. Over here are some herbs that I'm already stockpiling. Strawberry mint smells like strawberry mint. Like I am so excited just to throw that into iced water or iced tea or I don't know, some type of dessert. And these are ARP rosemary plants. Um, I love rosemary. I throw it in my sourdough all the time. And ARP is the most cold hardy variety. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to overwinter this. We'll see, I, I don't know. It depends how cold the winter will be. And then I got some more oregano. Um, I use a lot of oregano in my cooking. I do have a lot of herbs in my garden, but it's always a question as to whether they'll survive the winter. Um, and if they don't, I will be starting a whole bunch more from seed as well. These are all my seeds over here. I went to a seed swap yesterday and picked up a lot of seeds. This year I was smart and I actually went through all my seeds before the seed swap so that I didn't get too many seeds. <laughs> I still probably bought some that I didn't need, but that's okay. And these are little seed bombs. I made these a couple weeks ago. This is a seed ball kit. So my understanding is it comes with everything you need and you create these little like balls with seeds in them, make great gifts, but just really easy to plant a whole bunch of pollinator friendly plants in your garden. I am excited for spring if you can't tell. So this is, this is just a fun little craft. So this looks like cheese, but it is just biodegradable air dry clay. And depending on how sticky this is, I think I can just work here. I'm gonna divide this into 12, I think. There's like a selection of seeds. So I think I'm gonna just sort of divide them up. This is the hummingbird blend. Uh, we'll just put a few of each. This is really cute. I'm gonna give these as gifts. So I definitely want them to produce at least a few plants in each one and then roll them together. If I have extra clay, that's fine. And then I will just place them on there so that I remember what they are. Oh, so you got in there. Okay, so hummingbird blend, butterfly blend. Well, this one has cosmos. I love cosmos. And milkweed, which I also love. I have a lot of milkweed in my yard already. So maybe I will gift these ones, butterfly blend. So it definitely comes with a lot of clay, which I guess, I don't know, maybe I should mix them in better so that they're spaced out. Butterfly blend and bee blend. China Aster, Coreopsis, Coneflower, Black-Eyed Susan. That sounds so beautiful. I've been really trying to incorporate more wildflowers or pollinator friendly flowers in my garden. The bonus of them is that they usually grow more easily than, you know, really exotic plants that are maybe not native to my area anyway. They, they do a lot better. They're easier to grow, which makes sense because they're used to growing here. The extra clay, maybe I'll just make these seed balls a little bit bigger so that they're easier to plant. 
And then I believe I need to let them dry. Allow the balls to dry for 24 to 48 hours before planting or sharing with friends. And then to plant them, you just bury them in your soil. And the clay, of course, will disintegrate. And then your plants will grow. It's cutesy. Obviously, you can just put seeds in the ground. I mean, this is not, it's just a cute little gift to give to people. But really, I am pretty delusional to be planning this all right now. This is the view from my deck. It's like actively snowing. Um, but things can change really quickly and we do need the snow so that we don't have crazy forest fires again, but <laughs> definitely doesn't feel like spring just yet. We've had some warm days, but then, you know, the snow comes back. Spock isn't sure if he should venture out <laughs> into the snow. <laughs> he might just sit here for a while. All right, I am ready to show you my new plants. Okay, I'm just gonna start with this one. Um, I am so excited about this plant. This is called Begonia Autumn Ember. It is like an iridescent red orange. There is some green in there. The leaves are a little bit hairy on the edges and there is like an iridescence. Like they change color in the light, which is crazy. So my dog, Spock is making snorting noises behind me if you're wondering what that noise is. And then there's like black spots on there, which is kind of like the ember idea, I guess. It just looks like it's glowing. I got all of these new plants from the greenery, which is in Kelowna, BC. They are one of my favorite nurseries. They're only open seasonally, so when it opens, I go. And that's where I got the herbs as well. They have everything. I feel like it is like this warehouse of plants and they grow a lot of their plants themselves. It's just, it's the best place, but it's only open in the spring and like beginning of summer. So when they're open, I try to go as much as possible. I don't live in Kelowna, so it is a little bit of a trip. Anyway, they have quite a few begonias. I could not resist this autumn ember plant. They did have it last year, but I just didn't pick it up and I've been thinking about it ever since. So I'm glad to have it. The petioles are a little bit hairy as well, which is just so cute. Um, I am gonna grow this in my cabinet. It is in my cabinet despite the lack of light. It's making me a little bit nervous putting it in the cabinet, but it does need the humidity in my house anyway. I know a lot of people successfully grow begonias outside of cabinets, outside of terrariums, but I just, I cannot. I mean, you saw outside, it is, it is winter here. It is dry. I feel like I'm just gonna baby these plants. And my begonias do well in the cabinet or in the terrarium setup, so why mess with it? But this one, I am just so excited. Today, I'm gonna add a couple leaves into that round dome terrarium. But other than that, I'm just gonna grow this in the cabinet. I do find begonias when I bring them home from nurseries, they often will die back a little bit um, and then sort of perk right up once they're used to their setting. I think this is so cool, but you can see the leaf that was used to propagate this. So there's like a huge leaf there that's kind of dying off. And then all of these are sprouted from the leaf. So this was obviously grown through leaf propagation, which is how I grow my begonias and that is just it's so cool because it's a rex begonia it doesn't grow upwards it's more like bushier and i just i love it i love begonias i know they're not everyone's cup of tea which i don't fully understand i do feel like when i was at the greenery they had like a huge table of all the begonias and it is almost overwhelming like they don't look as precious as they do when they're just by themselves, if that makes sense. Like a big mass planting of them almost is overwhelming. But once you pick one up and just like enjoy it, it's, it's fabulous. Okay, next up is a succulent and I've already repotted this guy. This is Crassula estangiol or Crassula spiralis and I put it in a little pot that I made. It doesn't have very big roots so it didn't need a very big pot. I think it looks so cute in this pot. I feel like it looks like a little bouquet of flowers or something. I have grown the Crassula Buddha's temple in the past and it did really, really well. It's in my planter at work. And this one is really similar but more petite almost unreal how the rosettes just spiral around this is just 
such a unique plant. And the shelf where I have my Hoyas has really, really bright grow lights. And so it's perfect for succulents and cacti as well. So I thought I have the space and I just could not resist. I am totally fine if this plant just stays petite like this. It's so detailed. I do find with Crassulas when they start to grow out, they kind of lose their shape if they're not getting enough light. I'm hoping I have enough light for that not to happen. But even if it does get weird and grows out of its shape, it will still have these crazy rosettes at the end. So yeah, I couldn't resist. It was a pretty good price and here she is. Next up is a Begonia Red Kiss. I've already put it in this black planter, which I feel like really accents the leaves on this plant. The edges are very, very dark red. They look basically black in most lighting. And then there's this red, deep reddish pink center. I feel like this plant is so dramatic. It looks so crazy. It looks unreal. Begonias often look unreal though. It does have hairy stems, which I do love on a begonia. I feel like it makes it even more otherworldly. And the new leaves are almost like a hot pink. They're like more of a rose color, which is which is really cool. I have never grown this type of painted leaf begonia. I'm assuming that it will be similar to my begonia silver dollar. The leaves are the same shape and things like that. So I'm gonna put it in the cabinet and hope for the best. I'm gonna add one of these leaves to my terrarium today as well, maybe two leaves. This one was a little bit of an impulse buy. I knew I for sure wanted to get the autumn ember begonia and then this one was on the table as well. Maybe it was there last year and I just didn't notice it, but this year it just really popped out at me and I'm really glad that I picked it up. The coloring on this plant is very, very unique. In my collection, I have a few plants that have like lighter pink variegation, like my Eglionema, but this deep hot pink against the black is just very, very cool. And I'm also so excited to see little baby leaves come out of the propagation in my terrarium if it does well. I love baby begonia leaves. I feel like they are so special. They're just like a mini, mini, mini version of the big leaves. And they're often even more iridescent than the big leaves. That is one of the reasons I love propagating begonia is that you get to see the baby leaves all the time, which is very special. My last and final plant that I got is this rat tail cactus. Rat tail cactus are very close to monkey tail cactus. I would love to have a monkey tail cactus as well, but the rat tail cactus grows up until it's too heavy and then it trails down. This one is the pink tipped rat tail cactus. So you can see the tips are pink. These little ones are even more prominent with the pink. I assume that the pink really needs a lot of light. So I'm hoping that the pink will stay. It does seem to be more prominent on the new growth, which is cool. I'm really hoping that this plant does well for me because I would love to have this big trailing cactus. I think that would look really cool. I'm gonna check if this needs repotting today. I just threw it into this planter, but I, I would like to give it a little bit more room if it needs it. I have no idea if this plant grows quickly or slowly. We'll see. The fact that it has so many new growth points is really promising. And hopefully I will have a fairly full trailing cactus pretty soon. In the meantime, it, it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna propagate these begonias and propagating begonias is very, very easy. You just have to pop off one or two leaves and it is helpful to have the petiole on there, but it's not actually necessary. You can just propagate from the leaves because the propagations actually pop out from the veins of the leaf. So I'm gonna just take one from that one and one from this one. That's literally all you have to do and then I'm gonna pop them into my terrarium. I'll just take the lid off this guy. Have quite a variety in there. I did cut them back recently because they were kind of getting overgrown and then added in a few more. So uh, I'm gonna pop the autumn ember just right there. And for begonia propagations to work, things need to be pretty humid. So terrarium is perfect. If you're propagating them just in a pot, I would definitely cover the pot with like a Ziploc bag or something. Otherwise they probably won't take. And I'm gonna pop this one over here, just right there. And they kind of look ridiculous right now, but the babies will just pop out from the center there or from the edges and it will be very, very beautiful. Onto some plant chores, fill it in and Brandy, we need to investigate what is going on. She is not doing well. As I said, I'm gonna pot up my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess 
And then we're gonna check out the rat tail cactus, see if that needs a bigger pot. I'm gonna get a cup of tea. While I was making my tea, I got a delivery and the delivery is planty, so I'm gonna open it right now. The dogs have just calmed down, they hate they hate when parcels arrive. So this is a few things. First of all, a watering can. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, also, I, I use a variety of fertilizers on my plants, but throughout the winter, I have been using almost exclusively their tablets and my plants seem really healthy. My plants had a hard winter, so I do think this is a great product. I will be interested to see how it works through the growing season, but through the winter, it was amazing. My plants continue to put out new growth, which is great. Um, and then they have this probiotics, which I've only used once, um, but I plan to use it a little bit more in the growing season. Again, it kind of just restores like the good bacteria in the soil is how I understand it. It's, it's probiotics. Anyway, watering can. Okay, so I, have been using this like plastic watering can that's really old and it always spills like it is terribly designed that when you pour it the the water comes out the top it, before it comes out of the spout and it's just what i have i've been using it often i end up using like really big jars if i'm mixing up a really big batch of water for my plants but i've been kind of just holding off on getting a new one until i found one that i really love this one is really unique, I think. This one is clear and it's not too big. Obviously, sometimes you mix up a really big batch of water and fertilizer and all that. Um, but for the most part, when I'm watering my plants, I prefer something a little bit lighter so I'm not like lugging around this massive thing. For a while, I had one of those um, pump sprayers, like those huge, like those huge things that you can put on your back <laughs> to spray your plants. I use that for a while. It just wasn't relaxing when I'm watering my plants. I am trying to like enjoy my life and enjoy my plants. So something smaller and lighter and cuter was what I was looking for. <laughs> the assembly should be fairly straightforward. There's only a few pieces. I assume it curves out like so. And then just screw that on. So cute. This is one liter. There was another parcel. <laughs> it's not planty, so we don't need to worry about it. Anyway, this is really cute. So this, it comes with this little nozzle, which I assume you can just put on the end if you want more like a sprinkle effect when you're watering. I watered my plants yesterday, so I won't be watering with this today, but someday soon, I will be using this. I will probably be using this every single time I water. Um, it's just perfect. It's, it's perfect for what I've been looking for. So yay. I will link this down below for sure if you also want an adorable watering can. I feel like I've been doing a lot of plant chores lately, but it's just because I'm getting ready for spring. I'm trying to be a little bit more organized this year, um, especially since I'm expanding the garden. I want my house plants to be thriving and not be sort of a huge chore throughout the spring and summer, if that makes sense. I'm trying to get all the major things done first. Um, we'll see if that goes well. I think there's something to be said to having a bit more balance, but once the garden gets started, I don't know if you're a gardener, you know, once the garden gets started, that's just like all I want to do. It's not really that all I need to do, but it's, I just want to be out there every single day, weeding and watering and, harvesting doesn't come for a long time, but with herbs and stuff it does. And it just, it's a way to be outside. Once it starts, that's all I wanna do. And so if my house plants are like good, they are growing, I can worry less about them during the gardening season. Okay, so I'm gonna repot the Hoya. And I'm putting that into this plastic nursery pot. I've been trying whenever I repot Hoyas to always put them into plastic nursery pots. I have found that the roots really stick to porous surfaces, including terracotta, so Plastic is just easier. I always have tons of these anyway because I just keep them when I get a new plant. <laughs> okay, I am using my Molly's Aeroid Mix mixed with a little bit of potting soil. I like to add a little bit of potting soil for Hoyas. I don't know, I feel like they enjoy it. We've got some pretty big roots. They're not huge. I could probably have left this for a little while longer, but I do want this Hoya to grow really big. 
as quickly as possible, return to its former glory. These are cuttings that I took um, after I treated all my Hoyas with sulfur, not all of my Hoyas, but most of my Hoyas with sulfur. Um, some of them seem to have some type of root rot situation and it might've just been from like rinsing them off all the time. Um, so I did have to cut this one. I'm really glad it rooted up. I saved it. Well, so far so good anyway. The next step, we'll see how it does, but hopefully, hopefully it's happy. It should be flat mite free and the roots are healthy. Hopefully I see some growth pretty soon from this one. Now, I don't know for sure that I'm gonna have to repot this guy. He might be totally happy in this little pot. I just wanted to see what is going on. Should probably wear gloves, but living on the living on the edge. So you can see the roots. It's definitely not root bound, but I don't think there'd be any harm in potting it up a little bit more. I do prefer my cacti and succulents to be in terracotta. I just feel like it's better. Um, so I'm gonna grab a little bit. I'm gonna keep it in this soil. I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit of cactus soil into a terracotta pot. I'll just go grab that. So this is the smallest terra. Well, I have a like really tiny terracotta, but they're like even smaller than this. So this is the next size I have. I think that will be fine. I'm not gonna be giving this a crazy amount of water anyway. And I'm trying out the Molly's succulent mix. I haven't used that before, but I'm trying it for this plant. I have enough succulents that it was worth buying a bag and trying it out. And I'm not even gonna disturb the roots. I'm just gonna pop it right in there. loosen the top a little bit and then add a little bit more soil on top. I really want this guy to do okay. So be very careful. When I repot cacti, I always get like dirt stuck onto the spikes. Um, and it's not a big deal. I could definitely just leave it there, but it is sort of aesthetically annoying. I have learned to just use a paintbrush that I keep specifically for this purpose to brush them off. I am sure that there is like cactus brushes that exist that do an even better job of this, <laughs> but I already have five bajillion paintbrushes and this works pretty good. It works pretty good. I'm doing this one last because I feel like there might be some pests or something going on. This is my philodendron and brandy and it was doing really well for a while. It was climbing and then I did find some thrips and I thought I treated them. I thought I got rid of them, but it's just not doing well. It doesn't look great. The new leaves come out. There's a new leaf coming out here and it's rotten. And I've talked about philodendron and brandy before. I am disappointed by this plant. It's not at all what I expected it to be. The roots look okay. I thought this plant would size up a lot. And as you can see, it's really long. It has a trellis. It is in my cabinet generally, but now that it has strips, I don't really want to risk putting it in the cabinet. And I guess I just don't feel like it's really worth saving. And that's really mean, but I don't love it. It bothers me. And if it has thrips, it's now like a risk to my other plants. I've had it for quite a while. I've tried to love it. Maybe I would love it more as like a trailing plant. Maybe I should try that. Maybe if I put it back in and just grow it as a trailing plant. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I am honestly really tempted to just throw it out, but I feel bad doing that unless there's like, unless it is really unsavable. I do it sometimes but it's when the pests almost seem like not, not manageable at all. I'm not gonna put it back in the cabinet, which might kind of just kill it anyway. We'll take care of the problem. <laughs> um, it, it, wouldn't, it wasn't dying when I didn't have it in the cabinet, but the new leaves just wouldn't really come out properly. Um, and then when I put it in the cabinet, it grew really fast. Okay, we're gonna have it as a trailing plant. I'm gonna find somewhere to put it. Okay, the rat tail cactus is going to go, I think down here, the grow light on this shelf is slightly brighter than the grow light on the other shelf. 
and the philodendron brandy has been sprayed down and there's actually just a spot here on this shelf because this is where the hoya was water propagating so that that looks okay the leaves of course will turn a little bit and look more natural as it gets used to this area and i popped the nursery pot with the crimson princess into this like mint little cover pot that i've had for a while sitting empty and i'm going to actually just put the crimson princess up here at the top i feel like it can fill in this little area. All right, friends, that is all for me for today. I totally did not drink my tea because I was too busy plant shoring. Hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>